Really? Well, that's pretty interesting. Man, you know, sometimes I wonder about what's happening at Nintendo Prime. What's happening with Nintendo? I, I You know, I'm, I'm going through my phone here, and there's all these emails all the time, right? Trying to get a hold of me for different sponsorships, different companies. MCNs, thinking for some reason they want me on and that I want to hand them parts of my paycheck for literally nothing in return. I don't get it. It's just that time of the year. It's E3, and everyone wants a slice of that E3 pie. And apparently everyone wants a slice of that Nintendo Prime E3 pie. It's it's weird. But what's not weird is what the hell is the point of E3 if it's not for game announcements? Sure, we have our giveaways, right? $35,000, not $35,000, $3,500 worth of giveaways. Skyward Sword Joy-Con, Power A, Fusion Controller, Nintendo Switches games, accessories, eShop gift cards, etc. We have a whole bunch of stuff we're giving away during E3. That's exciting. Collectibles, oh, it's great. It's awesome. But, but, none of that matters if Gamer Christmas doesn't deliver. So let's get into my predictions for Nintendo's E3 2021. All right, so this list, I feel, is a little bit safe. However, this list is also one that I actually believe is possible. Now, Nintendo doesn't typically have hundreds and thousands of stuff they unveil at E3. Usually, if you look at the history, it's about three, four, sometimes five things, with like three of them being big new surprises. Uh, But this list is a little bit more jam-packed because we don't actually know really anything that's coming after Skyward Sword HD factually with release dates. Splatoon 3 next year, Shin Megami Tensei 5 sometime this year. Don't know when. Uh, We have no idea when Breath of the Wild 2 is coming or Metro Prime 4 or Bayonetta 3. Uh, There's just a lot of unknowns with the release slate of games after, well, after Skyward Sword on July 16th. So we have Miitopia coming up. We just got new Pokemon Snap. We have Mario Golf Super Rush next month. What can we expect Nintendo to actually talk about at E3? What kind of show is Nintendo even going to put on? Let's start with the kind of show Nintendo is going to put on. Nintendo isn't going to shy away from what they've always done during E3, at least for the last four or five years. And that has been, hey, we're going to have our digital showcase, right? Our, our, Our kind of Nintendo Direct style, but beefed up, higher presentation value, likely a little bit of comedy involved, Doug Bowser making some sort of Bowser-related joke or something like that. Uh, There'll be something going on like that. Uh, Nintendo's going to deliver the goods in a traditional Nintendo digital event kind of way. But what happens with Nintendo Treehouse? Because Treehouse typically streams pretty much the entire time the E3 show floor is open, right? From opening to close, they essentially are streaming a bunch of game developers, a bunch of gameplay. What's happening with that? I think Nintendo is still going to do Nintendo Treehouse. The question is, will Treehouse be part of the actual E3 stream? If it's part of the official ESA stream, then I think it's going to be a limited presentation, like an hour or two at most, taking up of that in addition to their digital presentation. If it's on their own, it's going to make us covering E3 a bit more complicated because Nintendo's going to be conflicting Nintendo Treehouse coverage with the rest of the ongoings at E3. So, I think it's highly likely that Nintendo is going to have a condensed Nintendo Treehouse. Instead of having four days of streams for Nintendo Treehouse, there's going to be like a four-hour window stream for Nintendo Treehouse. And I think Nintendo is hoping to acquire about half a day from the ESA to do their stuff. Now, let's get into this uh, and, and deep dive into what I actually expect Nintendo to show, whether it be during the digital event, whether it's at the actual Nintendo Treehouse portion, which I think will be cut back this year, but still jam-packed and worthwhile. Uh, let's get into it, and let's just start off the bat with the most obvious of obvious, the game I want the most, the game that I'm excited for the most, and that's Breath of the Wild 2. I do believe Nintendo's unveiling a new trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 at E3. I also think they're going to end up giving us a release date whether that release date is later this year or you know january february march of next year we're going to get an exact date i think this game's a much further along than people realize i think localization appears to be 
pretty close to being done. Uh, and I expect to get a whole bunch of new details, which means a whole bunch of podcasts and follow-up discussion videos and, and all that jazz on this game because this is the most hyped game for me anyways. Might not be for you, but it is for me. Uh, beyond that, I think we're going to get some Zelda 35th shenanigans. We're going to get you know Twilight Princess HD, the Wind Waker HD announced probably as a bundle. I think we're going to get something announced from Grezzo. Don't know if it's going to be Ocarina of Time, um, Majora's Mask. Don't know if it's going to be or the Oracle Games. Don't know if it's going to be the Minish Cap. I don't know what it's going to be, but Grezzo is going to be participating in the 35th anniversary of Zelda. I'm just not sure what exactly they're working on. Maybe it's a brand new top-down Zelda game. I don't know, but we're going to get the full plans, I feel, unveiled at E3. They're not going to wait till later in the year. They're going to they're going to give us a bunch of this Zelda 35th news there. Merchandise, maybe a new Lego set, right? We have a, we have a new Luigi Lego set coming this year. Why not a new Zelda set? I don't really think they conflict with sales or two different IPs. Uh, so yeah, that is something I expect at least at E3. Um, I do expect a new Donkey Kong game. Now, I was a bit skeptical on this before, before Samus Hunter... Uh, told me about, hey, there's like a new 3D uh, Donkey Kong game in the works. Either it's a full 3D game, you know, like Donkey Kong 64, or you can go to Donkey Kong Tropical Freestyle where it's side-scrolling but with 3D environments, right? It's 3Ds in it somehow. But here's the thing. Regardless if it's more like Donkey Kong Country or more like DK64, or maybe it's its own thing. Maybe it's like Mario Odyssey. I have no idea. Regardless of what direction that game takes... I do think it's interesting to think about the idea that it is Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary. I did think that we're going to do something for the 40th anniversary. I thought that we we're going to be more like a DK40, you know, Donkey Kong 40, where, um, hello, won't that be, make a lot of sense? If you think about Pac-Man 99, Tetris 99, Mario 99, it makes a lot of sense in that style to put that on there. And maybe we will get an announcement like that. Maybe that is the Donkey Kong game we get. I'm not sure. We're not, some sort of Donkey Kong game is getting announced for the 40th anniversary of DK. All right. Next up, a Kirby game. I'm just throwing this out there. Kirby isn't always revealed at E3. Kirby isn't always made a big deal of at E3. Uh, Kirby could be something they drop as a Twitter announcement later this year. There are Kirby games every single year. That's why they don't always appear at E3. But I do think Nintendo is going to tease us with a mainline Kirby game. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if it holds up to the hype and ends up being a game worthy of us getting super excited about. I think Kirby Star Allies was, was a pretty good game, but it's pretty par for the course, right? It's like, a, it's like a, a stock standard Kirby game. I think we're all ready for something to be beyond the norm. All right, next up, uh, Fire Emblem Remake. Fully expect the Fire Emblem Remake. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. They were pumping this out, you know, with Awakening and Echoes and all this stuff happening over on the 3DS. I expect it to continue here. Three Houses was a huge sales success. I expect a quick follow-up here with a Fire Emblem remake to come later this year, by the way. I think that's a, that's a 2021 release. I think we're finally going to see Hollow Knight Silk Song. We haven't seen it since last E3, and I think we're finally going to get a new trailer with a release date announced during Nintendo's portion of events so whether it's the direct whether it's at the treehouse yeah we're gonna see hollow knight silk song it's gonna get a, a release date finally uh that's one of the only indie games i really have on here uh bayonetta 3 i think bayonetta 3 is going to get unveiled with a release date now i'm on the fence whether bayonetta 3 will end up being this year or if it's going to be like a january game because it would work i think it worked very well as a january game for nintendo uh but it is going to get announced, and there is going to be a release date. Well, not really announced. It's going to get shown off, and there's going to be a release date. So, yay, Bayonetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, 2D Metroid. If you can't guess what we mentioned, a 2D Metroid, what, I don't think we're going to see Metroid Prime 4 this year. I think they're going to maybe mention it, like, a, oh, we need more time before we can show this off. But until then, here is a new Metroid experience for you. And then they're going to show a 2D side-scrolling Metroid game. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, th I think it's going to sell decently well. Uh, I hope it's a brand new experience and not a remake of a prior game. I think um, we, 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 I've kind of hit my limit with like just rehashing old 2D side-scrollers. Let's make a new one. If you're going to make a 2D side-scrolling Metroid game, make a new one. And we now know Mercury Steam is likely not the team working on the one that did Samus Returns. They're, they have a new game getting published by 505 Games. I'm just saying there's probably one in the works by somebody, and maybe that somebody is... I have no idea, to be honest, but um, I, I expect one. A uh, couple things. These are kind of more surprise announcements. One, I expect a major third-party game, one 
uh, to unexpectedly get announced for Switch. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know if it's Call of Duty Warzone or the upcoming Call of Duty game coming out later this year. I don't know if it's, you know, at, at this point, would it be shocking if Grand Theft Auto V was announced? Grand Theft Auto V is clearly a game that could run on Switch. It's been able to run on Switch since day one, and we still don't have it. So I don't know if that's the game. There's going to be some sort of surprise game we don't expect. Think back on the Doom 2016 announcement or the Wolfenstein announcement or, uh, you know, the Civilization VI announcement. Think along the lines of a major third-party game that you just would never even think is possible on Switch coming to Switch. And I mean natively on Switch. I also think we're going to see two other major third-party games announced, like Hitman 3, as streaming games coming to Switch. So I don't think streaming games is going away. I think it's going to expand. I think we're going to see two more major third-party games announced for strictly streaming. But I do think we're going to get one new native game that people didn't think was possible on Switch, especially since we're in this whole um, new era, the, 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 the new generation, I guess, as they say. Uh, next up, I do think we're going to see, this is, this is one of the surprise reveals from Nintendo. Remember when Shatura Furukawa was talking about how they're dedicated, not just to updating old games, which we might get some DLC updates for old games. I, I don't have that in my predictions, but I think that might be a safe bet to say something's getting DLC, right? Uh, yeah, Chintaro Furukawa also they're dedicated to new IP, starting with a new IP reveal from Monolith Soft. Now, we have a pretty good idea that Monolith Soft is working on a new Xenoblade game, but I think Monolith Soft is also working on a brand new IP. We've had um, some teases based on hiring posts over the years that that's been happening for quite a while, and I think this E3 is when they unveil Monolith Soft's new IP now. That IP, I don't think, is going to come till 2022. I think that's that, that's the caveat here. It's going to be a 2022 game. But new IP from Monolith Soft, get hyped. Last time was Xenoblade Chronicles. So, yeah, that turned out to be a pretty damn good series. Let's see what Monolith Soft has works. Remember, Monolith Soft has helped on th everything from Mario Kart to Zelda. Who the hell knows what they're working on? But it's going to be something to be excited about, to be sure. Uh, now... I do expect them to also have a game tournament of some type, maybe two of them. Uh, this will happen in the Treehouse segment. I think it's mostly just going to be Treehouse employees. Um, so, yeah, if you like what like the Nintendo Minute interactions, it's going to be something kind of like that. Uh, and they're probably going to play either Smash Bros. Uh, or Splatoon 3 or, or something like that, even though Splatoon 3 doesn't come until next year. Uh, it, it could be something else. Maybe, maybe they end up playing some Mario Kart uh, if they announce new DLC for Mario Kart. Uh, what I find is interesting as well is I do think they are going to reveal a Smash character at E3, just one. Remember, there's two left, right? We got two left on, on, the, on what is supposed to be the final Fighter's Pass. We'll see. Maybe there will be another Fighter's Pass. But for, as far as we're aware, Sakurai and everyone else has essentially said this is it. Last Fighter Pass. Um, so I do think we're going to get an announcement on a character. You might want to know my predictions for what that character is. I have no idea. For now, I'll just go with Crash Bandicoot. But uh, it could be anything. That's that's what's nice about these character reveals. They're surprising every single time. Uh, even if it's like, oh, no, it's another Fire Emblem character. Did you really think they were going to add another Fire Emblem character? That would still be a surprise, even if it's a bad one for some people. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to get a Smash character reveal as well. Um, so there's that. Uh, things not to expect. I got two major things I don't want you to expect to see at E3. Metro Prime 4. Let's set our expectations at zero. If we end up seeing the game, awesome. But let's not expect it. Remember, this game rebooted development like two years ago, and then a pandemic happened, right? Beginning of 2019, development is rebooted. End of 2019, we're in a pandemic. So let's be real realistic here. That Half the game's development at Retro Studios happened during a pandemic. It's not coming this year, guys. If we're lucky, it'll come next year. If we're, you know, more realistic, it's probably coming 2023. So, it sucks that we have to wait so long, but I don't think we should expect Metroid Prime 4. That's why we're going to get 2D Metroid this year. As for Metroid Prime Trilogy HD, they're still going to be holding on to that, I feel, until they're ready to show Metroid Prime 4. So, think 2022, potentially, for Metroid Prime H Trilogy HD. All right. Another thing you should not expect. You heard me not put this in there. Switch Pro Reveal. Stop it. Just stop it. Do you think they're releasing Switch Pro in August? I'm asking you. Look at Nintendo's history of announcing revisions and releases. Switch Lite, 
announced, what was it, September or something, released at the end of October. Uh, look at the Nintendo 3DS. When they announced it, they released it two months later. Do you think they're going to announce a Switch Pro at E3 that could kill momentum of the current Switch sales and then not have it come out till October or November at the earliest? Like, really? You think they're going to kill Switch sales for five months? No. They're not idiots. They're not dumb. They're going to announce the Switch Pro very close to when they're going to release it, like within a month or two at most. So don't expect Switch Pro to be talked about. So no, I've had a number of people message me, oh, Nate, you're going to be disappointed when Switch Pro isn't shown. No, I'm not because I don't expect it. If it is shown, I will be shocked. But don't expect it. Nintendo has, they're not dumb. They're marketing wizards. They are peaking right now with Switch. The Switch sales are going like this. They're going to want to keep the sales going like that. They're not going to want to announce a system that's going to make it go like this. Boom, hit a wall, go down, and then the Pro comes out and it shoots back up. They would rather it just keep going up, announce the Pro. It does like a little dip like this. It flatlines a little. Pro hits and then goes back up again. That's what Nintendo wants. They don't want to see a massive sales dip. So, again, don't expect a Pro announcement. If we get it, awesome. I mean... I, more than anyone, would love to see Switch Pro announced, but I, I don't think you should expect it. Nintendo hasn't really announced the system at E3 since the Wii U. If you, if you think back, you know, the new Nintendo 3DS stuff wasn't announced there. Uh, obviously, Switch wasn't announced there. Switch Lite wasn't announced at E3. Think about this logically. Nintendo hasn't been using E3 to announce platforms since, what, 2010? 2011, I think, actually, was when they announced the Wii, the Wii U. was 2011, before Skyward Sword came out. You saw what announcing the Wii U in 2011 did to the Wii sales and did to Skyward Sword. Yeah, Nintendo's not going to do that. You're going to wait. And it's not going to be a next-gen platform, so it's not going to have that sort of impact. I'm just saying they're going to wait. And that's it. That, that, that's my sort of safe, but I think also kind of ambitious, because there's a lot. I mean, think about that. A new IP from Monolith Soft, Breath of the Wild 2, Zelda 35th shenanigans, a DK game, a Kirby game, Fire Emblem remake, Bayonetta 3, 2D Metroid, a major third-party game. Um, hello, this is like a really, really jam-packed E3. Like, this list might seem small, but it's packed. And there's a lot of rumors backing some of this stuff up as well. We'll see if those rumors are correct. But I also kind of sort of think my predictions are right. There's a couple things I threw in there as well that weren't part of the rumors. So we'll see what happens. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. Oh, oh, man, I really hope you guys join us for our E3 coverage. So much going on. Today I'm ordering more and more items for the giveaway. I uh, got, the, got the Skyward Sword Joy-Cons taken care of, uh, and I got a couple other things taken care of as well. Um, this giveaway is just growing and growing and growing. Um... And thank you guys so much for your support, for subscribing, for liking, uh, for, for popping on the live streams just to say hi. I appreciate all of you, and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, yeah, P.S. We'll be live streaming again tonight at 8 or 8.30 p.m., somewhere in that time schedule. We're trying to keep it consistent.